Good morning. Welcome back. Our San Antonio Spurs just a day away from tipping off the NBA Summer League season in Las Vegas. It's after getting in a final workout at the Spurs practice facility. Number one pick Jeremy Sohan out of Baylor will be making the trip of the team after testing positive for COVID. But his ability to suit up remains in question as he continues to rehab in the NBA health and safety protocols. We do know the other two draft picks will be ready to go. That includes Malachi Branham and Blake Wesley, who signed his first ever professional contract. It's interesting. It's a juggling act of trying to give enough structure and organization so there are roles, but give enough freedom so they dictate the roles, right? This is, Summer League is different than the season. So there's a part of us that want them to tell us what it should be, but it's our job that it's not a free-for-all on the circus. So it's, uh, it's a juggling act for sure. I'm excited, I mean, uh, to play in Summer League. Uh, I went to Summer League three years in a row to watch the games. I seen uh, Zaire Williams, uh, Kate Cunningham play last year. So to be able to play this year against them is gonna be good, gonna be fun. Tomorrow's game against Cleveland tips off at 4 p.m. at Cox Pavilion in Vegas. Spurs will play Golden State Sunday, Houston Monday, and Atlanta next Thursday. Well, the first time since he agreed to a one year, six and a half million dollar deal, Lonnie Walker was introduced as a Laker in L.A. yesterday. First question Lonnie was asked is how all of this unfolded for him in the offseason. Well, it kind of first started, you know, when I was, I was out here working out, just trying to figure out what's next and, and what to do. And um, I seen that, you know, DeJounte was about to leave to the Hawks and whatnot. And. Um, I know that they're about to be in the process of rebuilding and doing things of that nature. So, um, you know, Luke and my, you know, we, we came to an agreement of what's next, what we're doing, um, so on and so forth. And the Lakers gave us the call. You know, I'm just here, ready for the opportunity. Lonnie spent four seasons with our Spurs after he was drafted back in 2018. Brennan Bears, highest ranked team from San Antonio in the 6A state rankings released by Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. The Bears, who finished 13 and 1 last season, check in at number 12. Defending state champion Austin Westlake picked up the, at the top, uh, picked at the top rather, following their 16 and 0 season last year. In fact, it was another Austin school who ended the Bears season last year. Lake Travis handing them their only loss. Finishing on top of 12's top 12. Guess who's not far behind the Bears in the state rankings? How about the Steel Knights checking in at number 16 after their 11 and 1 finish? Of course, the two schools will kick off their season against one another in the third game of our triple header at the Alamo Dome Saturday, August 27th. It's the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. We are in time now, 442 and 78 degrees for now. If you're thinking about remodeling your home, new flooring is an option. We're going to tell you which wood options can stand up best against scratches and stains. And next, a new warning from United Airlines, who uh, is taking on the FAA over staffing issues at air traffic control centers. And welcome back. It's 445. United Airlines says the FAA's air traffic control system is to blame for the recent flight delays and cancellations. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new warning from the COO of United Airlines taking on the FAA over staffing issues at air traffic control centers during the holiday weekend packed with airline cancellations and delays. United Airlines wants everyone to know that it believes that the FAA is at fault for more than its share of delays this summer. Other airlines probably think the same. The FAA firing back, telling ABC News there were no staffing delays at all and will continue to hold airlines responsible. So the FAA is probably responsible for some of the troubles this summer. And then airlines themselves probably overscheduled what they could fly. So they're selling too many flights for what the system can handle. And coming up at 7 a.m., when experts say those travel delays and cancellations will start to ease up. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News. New York. Okay, when it comes to updating homes, hardwood floors are a super popular choice. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz tells us which ones can best stand the test of time. 
Their classic hardwood floors never go out of style, but any good flooring needs to stand up to a lot of abuse. So Consumer Reports tested a variety of wood floors to see how well they resist dents, scratches, stains, and foot and paw traffic. This solid wood flooring from Terragren is made from bamboo. It aced the scratch and dent test and was very good at resisting stains. It's $7.50 a square foot. If you get a lot of foot traffic, they recommend this LL flooring red oak instead for $6.30 a square foot. Whether you're installing new floors or you have them already, they do require some special care. A no shoes inside rule can be great if you can enforce it, but it can be tough with kids and pets tracking dirt in. Use doormats at entrances and area rugs in high traffic zones. To limit scratches, use felt protectors under furniture legs and avoid sliding furniture. <laughs> A good vacuum can help too. CR says this Kenmore Elite Pet Friendly Upright is a good choice for bare floors and carpets. If you're tempted to mop, experts say go very easy on the water and never use a steam mop because they can damage those hardwoods. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. On the lookout for any traffic trouble spots here as we await Justin Horn's arrival at the top of the hour. Right now things look really good around town. You're looking live at Loop 410 and Marbach. And a beautiful sunset behind you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a gorgeous sunset. Some clouds hanging around here. And uh, it was, well, 101 again yesterday. We are going to be getting even hotter than that today by a little bit. And then uh, going into the weekend, it's just going to be brutally hot. So just prepare for it. Yeah, I mean, ridiculous. We're going to be, we're looking at 105 on Sunday, which would tie for the hottest day so far. We hit that back in June. All right, yes, good looking sunset. Um, we got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now, and temperatures are very, very warm. So here's the uh, satellite picture, and we've got a couple of clouds that are hanging around here. Some of our morning clouds, they will be sticking around for the next couple of hours, and that'll be about it. And we'll obviously start the warming process in the next few hours. Hours. We keep some of the morning clouds around here. We'll bottom out right around 78 degrees and then get up through the 80s quite quickly and already up to 92 degrees then at noon today and add 10 to that. So we're looking at 102 for a high temperature later on today because like I said, it's just so easy to get up there now. But the problem again is the fact that we still have some humidity hanging around here. So these dew points remain up in the about mid 60s. Yes, it does drop considerably from this morning, but that still means we're going to have those heat index readings getting up into the 104 105 range. And I mean, just brutally hot conditions around here. One thing to keep in mind, though, moist air takes a lot more energy to to heat up. If our dew points dropped, say, for some reason, dropped down into the 50s, those thermometer readings, those temperatures would just skyrocket later on today. So that's how how hot this air mass is that's on top of us right now. Now, jump ahead to Sunday. Nothing's going to really change between now and the next couple of days, except add a degree or two each and every day. Now, Sunday, there is actually it's kind of ironic. That's our hottest day, but there's a very, very small chance for a stray shower too. And again, this is kind of a broad brush. Just, you know, one or two of them may pop up about a 10% chance at best. But uh, if some folks get lucky, yeah, you may actually get a, a shower on Sunday. Monday, it is back to just kind of the heat around here. Then as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, there's a disturbance that's going to try and slide on here from the, the Gulf of Mexico, and that will give us at least a chance, uh, maybe 20% chance for a couple of showers around here in Wednesday and then going into Thursday. So a little glimmer of hope, just a little bit of a, a glitch here and there. Um, other than that, it is just going to be very, very hot. 92 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies again, and plenty of sunshine today. 102 for high temperature. We are going to be doing it again tomorrow, even hotter on Saturday and the hottest on Sunday. The record on Sunday is 103, so it looks like that's a pretty sure bet of breaking that record. And again, 105 ties the hottest so far this year. And then, yeah, that small chance for a couple of showers on Wednesday. I've got that slight mention in parentheses there for Sunday, a shower. Don't get excited <laughs> about that, but yeah. um, it is, you know, at least a glimmer of hope by midweek.
Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, I just keep thinking about uh, how we have to plan ahead to hydrate now for just about anything. Yes, I mm -hmm. mean. And they also say one of the best things you could do when you wake up in the morning, drink a bottle of water then because you've been, you know, you've been asleep five to yeah, eight hours you, ideally. Because you do lose so much moisture just by sleeping, but that's that's a really good idea just to mm -hmm. kind of, you know, prepare for the day ahead. So especially during the summer months. Yep. Yeah. Here we go, 452, 78 degrees. Coming up next, a first look at Kevin Smith's Clerks 3 as the nearly 30-year-old trilogy comes to an end. Kevin Smith's Clerks trilogy is finally ending, plus a new series is debuting on Lifetime. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. That's how we did it in the 90s, son! After 28 years, writer-director Kevin Smith is finishing his Clerks trilogy. You can now watch the just-released trailer for Clerks 3, which will be released in 700 movie theaters for two nights only, September 13th and 15th. Both nights will feature an exclusive look behind the scenes. Smith will also take his movie on a Clerks 3 convenience tour, starting in New Jersey. If you think you could be in danger, you are in danger. Actor Paul Walter Hauser says he loved getting the chance to work with Rocket Man star Taron Edgerton in the Apple TV Plus miniseries Blackbird, but says playing the role of inmate Larry Hall was difficult emotionally. I literally got sober while shooting episode four and have been since I shot that episode. Edgerton plays Jimmy Keene, who enters a prison to befriend Hall in the hopes of getting him to confess to a murder. He agrees filming was intense, but he found an escape in the gym. I was in the gym a lot for it, and that kind of became a nice way to sort of, I don't know, detox my energy, I suppose. Blackbird, which also stars Greg Kinnear and the late Ray Liotta, premieres July 8th. An upcoming limited TV series details the origin story of the gothic tale Flowers in the Attic. British actress Jemima Rupert plays Olivia Winfield, who over the course of four episodes transforms from innocence to the evil grandmother from the 1979 best-selling novel. Flowers in the Attic, The Origin, debuts July 9th on Lifetime. Hey! hey. And happy birthday to Ringo Starr. The former Beatle is turning 82. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Three minutes till five, 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a look at what's next for the suspect charged with killing seven people at a suburban Chicago 4th of July parade after he confessed to police. Plus, a new fitness device called Smart Ring claims it can give your metabolism a boost. Details coming up in your morning tech bites. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking there at I-35 at Olympia and I-35 at San Marcos where things are moving. We are actually going to check in with Justin Horn very shortly. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A house fire turns deadly on the northwest side overnight. Details coming up. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The man charged with killing seven people during a July 4th celebration near Chicago has confessed to his crimes, according to police. They also say he contemplated another attack that same day. The details coming up. And it's a calm 78 degrees for now. Things will heat up. And if you think this week is hot, just wait till the weekend. Oh boy, yeah. When do you hear this? Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, July 7th. For some of us, summer hibernation has begun. <laughs> yes, we are definitely going to stay inside as much as we can, uh, especially this weekend, Mike. Yes, indeed. It's uh, yeah, it's going to be miserable to to be outside. And like you were kind of talking about, this is the, the nice time of the day. So if you can sort of just flip flop your whole day, sleep during the day and be up at night. I mean, it might be easier to be outside. It is just uh, we don't mean to, to laugh about this, but yeah, it is. And it's going to be dangerously hot, especially this weekend. 79 degrees right now. Still got plenty of humidity hanging around here. Check out the bottom number, dew point 72. Plenty of moisture in the atmosphere. So we do have a slight bit of a uh, heat index. Yesterday we got up to 101 today. Today, we are looking at 102 for a high temperature and get used to seeing extra digits or at least above zeros on those triple digits, I should say. The aquifer, big hit yesterday, down nine tenths of a foot. And again, check with your local municipality as far as any watering restrictions in your neighborhood. And mold is on the low side. At least that did go down from its peak way back on Saturday. Yeah, plenty of humidity out there. So we're talking heat index right now. 79 feels like 82 degrees. 
80 in Hondo, 82 Castroville, and uh, 83 right now is what it feels like at Canyon Lake. And then later on today, we'll still, even though the humidity drops down somewhat, we're still going to have a heat index to deal with this afternoon. So it's going to feel even hotter. So yeah, hot, some humidity still left over around here. Blazing hot this weekend, and we are looking at a record on Sunday. Not only the daily record, but also tying the hottest so far this year. And we start off very hot next week then. There is a small glimmer of hope by about the middle of next week. Just keep your fingers crossed for that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, the man, the myth, the legend, Justin Horn. Thank you, Mike, for that introduction. <laughs> Here's for hoping that everyone's AC in their car works because, you know, when you get in and like blasts you with hot air, that's that's the worst. Uh, hopefully it works well because uh, temperatures, as Mike said, really going to warm up. Later today, I want to show you some flashing lights here. This is Loop 410 and Ingram North, so this is westbound. Uh, they do have the roads closed here uh, for construction, but it is slowing traffic down a little bit, and we can see that here on our map as you go out towards uh, Ingram Park Mall. That's the area we're talking about there along 410. Uh, you notice we've got a little bit of red there. That's where the road is closed, uh, so you got to get on the service road and go around it. Right now, not a big backup, and I'm guessing they're going to pick up this construction pretty quickly. But just a heads up, if you're uh, headed in that direction. Also, we're detecting a minor crash here uh, near Zarzamora, uh, and this is uh, right there at the intersection near uh, I-10, so it doesn't look, look like that's causing any issues at this hour. That's all we're looking at right now on our maps. Otherwise, it's a pretty quiet morning, and we'll probably continue to see roads moving pretty smoothly here next couple of hours. I'll keep an eye on TransGuide cameras and let you know if <coughs> anything else pops up, guys. Natalie, breaking news. What began as a job for San Antonio firefighters has become a police investigation. Homicide detectives are combing through the burned out remains of an apartment northwest of downtown where two people died overnight. Trina Weber is live in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue near Culebra Road and North Zarzamora. Hey, Katrina, it sounds like investigators have questions about those deaths. Well, they definitely do have some questions. Now, the officers who I spoke to stopped short of calling this suspicious, but they did mention that homicide investigators are taking a look at this situation. They're working in an apartment toward the back of this building where you see the light on the back side of that. Uh, there's a small apartment, and that is where they say they found two people dead earlier this morning. Now, this began as a fire call right after midnight. Uh, the San Antonio firefighters arrived, and we have some video of that scene as well. Uh, firefighters arrived and found this apartment on fire. They managed to put out the fire and then they did find the bodies of two people, a woman believed to be in her late 40s and a man believed to be in his late 30s, both of them dead inside that apartment. Now, something that they noticed in there prompted them to call in San Antonio police. And then that is when homicide investigators were called in as well. And they have been here ever since. We don't know what sparked uh, that belief that there is something uh, that was warranted uh, calling in police, but uh, we expect that we will find out more details later uh, as this investigation goes on. But right now, two people found dead inside an apartment here on Waverly Avenue, a man and a woman, and homicide investigators are looking into the situation. Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Safety changes could be coming for a busy San Antonio intersection after months of asking. Now, this is a story that we have followed for several months since Feliciano Jimenez was hit and killed at 39th and Commerce by a San Antonio police officer. Now, San Antonio Police Department records show that 58 crashes have been reported within 50 feet of that intersection between 2016 and 2021. San Antonio Public Works Department wrapped up a year-long traffic study of that intersection in May. The study found the amount of traffic on a given day and the number of crashes at the intersection met the requirements for public works to recommend a traffic signal. There were higher volumes of traffic and then we also looked at crash data for, for recent years and that kind of helped us. That, that met two of the, the criteria for putting in a uh, traffic signal. Until I see the lights, flashing lights, I'll be happy. I'll be happy for my uncle. The price tag for the proposal is $500,000. $100,000 will come from the mayor's office and the other $400,000 from a capital improvement project request. The project budget request will go before city council in September. If approved, work can start on the traffic signal in October.
Now to the migrant tragedy here in San Antonio. The man accused of driving the truck has waived his court hearing. For now, Omero Zamorano Jr. has agreed to remain in jail pending trial. He's facing a charge in connection to the deadly human smuggling case. If convicted, he could face the death penalty. Meanwhile, all but six of the 53 migrants have been identified. The Bear County Medical Examiner says 22 of the dead were from Mexico, 19 from Guatemala, six from Honduras. The youngest victims just 13 years old. The 21 year old man charged with unleashing a hail of bullets into an Independence Day parade near Chicago confessing to his crime. As authorities continue investigating a motive, they are facing questions about how he managed to buy several firearms despite multiple warning signs. ABC's M. Wen has the latest from Washington. The man charged with killing seven people at a 4th of July parade near Chicago, confessing he opened fire from a rooftop into a crowd of families, according to prosecutors. Police say Robert Cremo III then fled to Madison, Wisconsin, where he considered shooting up another celebration. He seriously contemplated using the firearm he had in his vehicle to commit another shooting. Ultimately, he decided against it. Indications are that he hadn't put enough thought and research into it. Now, authorities say Cremo's father could also face criminal charges for the role he played in helping his son buy multiple guns, including the murder weapon. Cremo's father, despite Illinois' red flag law, sponsoring the application for his son's permit in 2020, just months after police responded to his home, where Cremo was allegedly threatening to kill everyone. Would we have hoped and wished there would be more we could do? Absolutely. You have limitations what you can do. The Highland Park community now planning funerals, two of them for two-year-old Aiden McCarthy's parents, who were found slumped over their son. Lauren Silva, who brought Aiden to safety, says his sock was soaked in blood. And when I took Aiden down to the garage, um, he wasn't crying. He just kept saying, is mama and dada okay? Um, and it was hard to, to look at him in the face and say it's going to be okay when I didn't know if it was. Cremo's next court appearance is at the end of the month. If convicted, he would face life in prison without the possibility of parole. M. Wen, ABC News, Washington. Time check, 509, 78 degrees. Apple is introducing a new lockdown mode to protect iPhones from state-sponsored spyware hacking. We're going to tell you how it works. Up next, why the U.S. Department of Justice taking a closer look at Governor Abbott's border initiative, Operation Lone Star. And we are expecting triple digits today and expecting it to get even hotter this weekend. But for now, we'll enjoy the 78 degrees out there. We'll be right back. Just about 513, Governor Greg Abbott has been sending more DPS troopers and taxpayer money to help beef up security at the Texas-Mexico border. Now the U.S. Department of Justice is taking a closer look at Operation Lone Star. The DOJ wants to find out if civil rights violations were committed under Governor Abbott's border initiative. State records show the Texas Department of Public Safety was notified of the probe back in May. Now in a letter, the DOJ says it received information that DPS might be targeting people for arrest based on their race or national origin. Several groups and immigration attorneys have asked questions about migrants who are arrested for trespassing and detained for weeks at a time. Trespassing is a misdemeanor. Now, Governor Abbott's told, uh, office told ABC News the Biden administration is attacking the state for, quote, taking unprecedented actions to do the federal government's job, end quote. Time now, 513 and 78 degrees for now. A major hotel chain suffering its seventh data breach since 2010. We'll tell you more about how Marriott has been affected. And we'll tell you how this new smart ring can help you boost your diet and exercise performance. Welcome to Allstate, where the safer you drive, the more you save. Like Rachel here. How am I looking? Looking good. The most cautious driver we got. Am I there? No, keep, keep going. How's that? I'll say when. Now, is that good? Lots of cars have backup cameras now, you know. Those are for amateurs. There we go. Like a glove, girl. Safe driving and drive-wise can save you 40% with Allstate. Click or call for a quote today. To help prevent bleeding gums, try saying Hello Gum Wash with Periodontax Active Gum Health. It kills 99% of plaque bacteria and forms an antibacterial shield. Try Periodontax Active Gum Health Mouthwash. 
We made a promise to our boy Blue that we would make the healthiest foods possible with the finest natural ingredients and real meat first. And that's our promise to you and your dog or cat. Because when you love them like family, you want to feed them like family. In today's Tech Bites, Apple's new effort to protect iPhones. Lockdown mode is meant to shield high-profile users like politicians from state-sponsored hackers. It turns off several vulnerable iPhone features, reducing the number of ways that hackers can attack a target. Speaking of hackers, Marriott has been hacked again, at least its seventh data breach since 2010. The hotel company says most of the information was non-sensitive internal business files and did not involve its core network. Attackers tried to extort the company, but Marriott refused to pay. And a first in the world of wearable tech development, Ultra Human has developed a smart ring that tracks metabolism to boost performance. The goal is to allow users to balance and take control of their health, and it does it without screens to avoid any distractions. They just track this. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 518. It's time now to check in with Justin Horn. It looked like there's a stalled vehicle on those train sky cameras. Yeah, we do have one out there. It's not causing uh, many issues. Uh, you can see it there, 90 in Nogalitos. Um, we see a lot of this this time of year. You know, this is a good reminder, too. Uh, with these hot temperatures, you have underinflated tires. You can have a blowout when temperatures get this hot because it creates more heat, more friction. So you want to keep those tires properly inflated this time of year because it can be pretty easy to have a blowout and you'll be stuck on the side of the road like that car. Uh, looking at another image here, this is 410 and Ingram North. Still have the road closed here for construction, so everyone's having to exit off to the service road. This is going west there on 410 out near Ingram Park Mall. So heads up there, we can see it on the map uh, with a little bit of a slowdown right there. We also have an uh, incident reported uh, on Nogalitos, and I'll show you that in just a second. But that is that slowdown. It's not too bad right now, but it may pick up as the morning progresses. So. Uh, I would imagine they'll pick up this construction soon, but it, for the time being, there is uh, a bit of an issue there. This, uh, what we thought was a minor accident earlier, this is actually that scene that Katrina is at. There is some police presence still there, so there may be a few traffic issues around that area, so keep that in mind as well. Otherwise, uh, we're, we're all good this morning. Not a lot of issues on the roadways. We'll see once things pick up if it, uh, it gets a little bit worse, Mike. Good news yeah. mm -hmm. so far. I like this picture. That's pretty. Almost makes it not seem so hot. I don't know why, but <laughs> just seeing those nice little wispy clouds it's out the, there. It's the cool blue. I guess may, going with. maybe it is. Yeah, all those little feathery clouds normally make him sneeze, but not allergic to clouds. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, we've got a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. We'll see a few of them. Our usual, you know, it's that 24 hour cycle, as I kind of referred to it, that we go through. Higher humidity in the morning. It does drop somewhat in the afternoon. We do have a heat index right now 82 Castroville at the airport, 83 Canyon Lake. And you can add to about 20 to those numbers, and that's what it's going to feel like later on this afternoon or even higher than that. So we'll make it up through the 80s this morning. 90 already at 11 o'clock, 92 at noon. So we're kind of adding and shifting everything up just a couple of degrees compared to the past couple of days. And we are going to make it up to 102. We hit 101 yesterday and the day before that. So we will continue to kind of add on uh, about a degree or so each and every day over the next few days. And then again, that 102 add a couple of notches on top of that. So it's going to feel like it's uh, roughly 105, 104, 105 here in town later on this afternoon. All right, satellite picture. There's that uh, kind of darker shade of gray. Some of these morning clouds hanging around here. They'll be getting on out by later on this morning and there is a you know fair amount of activity around the country up there in northern Missouri and southern Iowa but also kind of step back in this hole right here that big circle which is centered just about so uh, say Texarkana that's the the high which is sitting down on top of us and this is what is the unwelcome house guest which just doesn't know when to leave and it is going to start to get stronger as we go into uh, the weekend, the next couple of days. That's why we're adding a degree or so to temperatures going in toward the weekend. It just pushes down in the atmosphere. It's this dome sitting on top of us. Doesn't let anything happen except to heat things up. Now, the glimmer of hope is that it starts to the center of that high 
eventually starts to move off to the uh, west a little bit more. Another high center develops over here just off the coast of Florida. So we've got kind of the, the low in between. And what we're hoping for is little glitches, little waves to come in here by the middle part of next week. And it does look like one of these little waves is going to move on in. It's just enough. There's enough weakness in the atmosphere to get a couple of showers going around here. One or two of them. 92 degrees today at noon. Partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 102. Mostly sunny. We'll still have some leftover humidity, so heat index readings are definitely going to be something we have to keep in mind. Sunday, that's the day we're not looking forward to. 105, that's going to tie for the hottest this year. The record's 103 for that date, so that looks like it is going to be broken. And a shower is possible on Sunday. There's just a little disturbance. It's kind of funny. 105, but a shower is possible, and then a couple <laughs> more by Wednesday around here. And a shower that's earned itself parentheses. Yeah. But yeah, 105 and a shower, that'd be a hot shower. I mean, it's, okay. it just seems like it'd be hot rain coming down. And, and again, that's very, very small chance on Sunday, but a slightly better shot right. on Wednesday. So. Real well, quick. Hopefully pro somebody will see that. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Okay, 522, 78 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at some new films from Viola Davis and Margot Robbie. Viola Davis and Margot Robbie have new movies heading to theaters. That's right. CNN's Rick Domagella has those stories and more in the Hollywood Minute. You are called to join the King's Guard. Your kingdom in all of Africa shares this privilege. Here's your first look at Viola Davis in The Woman King. Based on true events, the film follows a group of elite female warriors protecting a West African kingdom in the 1800s. The Woman King debuts in theaters September 16th. Run away with another man. Run away with another man. I was thinking about that woman I loved. Run away with another man. That's the Dropkick Murphys performing two sixes upside down from their upcoming album, This Machine Still Kills Fascists. The 11-song set, releasing September 30th, features the Celtic punks covering the music of folk legend Woody Guthrie. So, two soldiers and a nurse found ourselves in... Amsterdam. Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, and John David Washington lead the ensemble cast of Amsterdam. Directed by David O. Russell, The Who Done It also features Robert De Niro, Rami Malek, and Anya Taylor Joy among the cast. Amsterdam arrives in theaters November 4th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Thought I just spotted Mike Myers there, too. Maybe. What a heck of a cast. Yeah. 527, 78 degrees. A new report finds that the Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented. Details coming up. And more baby formula relief headed to the U.S. from Australia. We'll tell you when it will arrive. And as you're waking up this morning, do you feel like you got enough sleep last night? Well, ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to tell you why experts say you might not be getting the best rest. Making headlines this morning, the mayor of Uvalde is accusing one person in particular of trying to cover up law enforcement failures during the school shooting. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are starting at 78 degrees, so that's not too bad, but uh, we are looking to another hot day once again. And a good morning to you. It's Thursday, July 7th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a great week so far and hope you're finding some ways to beat the heat, get around the heat, or maybe avoid the heat. <laughs> Michael's look uh, on his face says it all. <laughs> all. All of the above. Yeah, and it's tough when your air conditioners in your house, you know, sometimes have trouble keeping up in this heat. And I hate to say it, but just got to rip the band aid off. It's going to get hotter as we go into the weekend. The, we're going to tie for the hottest day so far this year. A few clouds are hanging around here right now. Otherwise, really good visibility. Temperature stands at 79 degrees, and that's five above normal. Dew point is at 72. It has come up as it usually does in the morning, and that means we do have a heat index to deal with right now. Wind out of the south at 8 miles per hour, and an okay breeze throughout the day. Uh, the 79 feels like 82 when you factor in the humidity. 83 is the heat index at Canyon Lake right now, and we will be dealing with somewhat of a heat index this afternoon because we're not going to get rid of all the humidity or it's not going to be dropping down as far as we'd like it to drop down in the afternoon. It still kind of hangs in there and that's why these afternoons have been so tough to deal with. Mold is on the low side and uh, as far as temperatures today, 102. We hit 101 yesterday 
And we're going to just add a, another degree to that. Same thing tomorrow over the weekend. And then, yeah, things are going to be peaking on Sunday. There is a glimmer of hope down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Justin's in this morning. What's going on, sir? Hey there, uh, we're tracking gas prices. Uh, you know they've been pretty brutal, right? Uh, we're starting to see these numbers come down. It's four and a quarter here in Bear County. Texas is averaging about four dollars and thirty-three cents. The average price of gas unleaded across the United States, four dollars and seventy-five cents. Hopefully these numbers continue to come down as we go throughout the rest of the summer. As we look at Loop 410 at Ingram North, this is the one trouble spot we've been finding. This is construction, not an accident or anything like that, but we are seeing cars having to exit onto the service road there. Really doesn't look like there's much of a slowdown. That uh, will start to become a slowdown if this continues for another hour or so. We'll see. I would imagine construction will end here pretty quickly. Uh, otherwise, road's looking good. There is a stall at US 90 in Nogalitos. That doesn't seem to be causing any issues, but uh, just be careful. There are a uh, few stalls here and there. And as we look at 281 and Bassey looks good as well. The map giving us mostly green here. That uh, one spot that we pointed out there along 410 actually looks better than it did earlier. Just seeing some yellows and oranges, which means there's a little bit of a slowdown. Otherwise, smooth sailing this morning. As you head out for work, we'll keep you posted if anything changes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Updating late breaking news. San Antonio homicide detectives have joined arson investigators in combing through an apartment where two people were found dead. Firefighters made the discovery after putting out a fire in that home. That happened in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue near Culebra Road and North Zarzamora. Katrina Weber has a live report from the scene. And Katrina, what have you learned about the people who died? Right now, we know just a little bit of information that police have shared with us. It's a man and woman, the woman about 50 years old, the man in his late 30s. They both lived in the apartment, according to police. Now, there are some relatives here, and we hope to be able to talk to them to see if perhaps they can shed some light on the situation. The apartment where this happened is in the dark. It's just down the driveway there. Uh, but we have some video to show you uh, what firefighters found earlier this morning. They got here a little bit after midnight, found that apartment on fire. Once they were able to get inside and knock down the fire, that is when they discovered the two people dead inside. For some reason, they called in uh, arson investigators as well as homicide investigators with San Antonio police. And those two teams did comb through that apartment uh, looking for clues regarding these two deaths. Now, they have not shared their findings with us, nor have we found out why or what made firefighters suspicious enough to call in those investigators. But we hope to learn learn more about that a little bit later on. But for now, again, two people found dead inside an apartment here in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue. Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented. That's the finding of a scorching new assessment from an active shooter training center. The report doesn't name names, but the Uvalde mayor is doing just that. As John Paul Barajas reports, he is accusing someone of covering up the truth. That's right, but they aren't staying quiet about the findings in this report. The review is from the alert team, which trains officers on how to respond to active shooter events. The report pointed out the locks at Rob Elementary were not working on the building's exterior doors, that the gunman could have been killed within minutes of stepping foot on the campus. It began with a crash and soon gunfire in Uvalde. At 1132, the report states the gunman reached a teacher's parking lot and fired toward school windows. Less than a minute later, he entered Rob Elementary. It's between that time frame, a Uvalde police officer armed with a rifle had the gunman in his sights. The gunman was able to get into the school as the officer asked for permission to shoot, a finding that doesn't sit well with the parents of a student survivor. If you saw that, wouldn't you want to do something about it? You see a gunman running with a gun in his hand, running towards a school full of kids at are still there in class, I would have shot him. In the report, alert notes the officer did not have to ask permission to fire since deadly force was warranted, but also adding the officer was concerned gunfire could hit kids in the area. A little over three minutes after the gunman's entry, 11 officers, some with body armor and rifles, are in the building and make their way to classrooms 111 and 112. They take on gunfire. This is where the report cites them losing momentum, they backed away as parents tried to go in. They are holding us back, trying to do their job, to go in and, and I really, I wish we would have all just barged in. Some kids were alive, my son was alive. To hear the killer 
walking back and forth with loud music, talking to himself, and, you know, laughing. The review states their training is to stop the killing, then stop the dying, adding, quote, this ordering means that we expect officers to assume risk to save innocent lives. As the gunman shoots sporadically, 19 minutes after he entered the school, the first ballistic shield arrives. Minutes later, 911 calls are made from inside the classrooms. For 13 minutes, there's conversations between officers in the hallway. At the time, District Police Chief Pete Arredondo asked for classroom keys, but they never tried to open the door. At 12.37, Arredondo attempts to negotiate with the suspect for 10 minutes. Finally, at 12.50, the classrooms are breached. The gunman is killed. There's a bunch of kids in the classroom. Why the going to the when you're trying to save lives? They just stood up there and waited and waited for 77 minutes. Alerts said there were also possibilities to distract the suspect and breach the door to get into the classroom sooner. The report also noted there was some confusion in coordination among officers. Some were bunched up in different areas of the hallway, which could have led to crossfire among law enforcement, but ultimately came down to not rushing in to save more lives. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Well, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is set to learn uh, his sentence for federal civil rights violations in the killing of George Floyd. A plea deal is in place that will likely extend his time behind bars while shifting him to possibly more favorable conditions in a federal prison. It calls for 20 to 25 years in prison. However, the final decision is up to a U.S. District Judge later today. Last month, prosecutors asked for the full 25 years on grounds that Chauvin's actions were cold-blooded and needless. The defense has asked for 20 years, saying Chauvin accepts responsibility for what he did. The Biden administration continues to try to ease the national baby formula shortage. The president just announced the 14th Operation Fly formula mission. It will bring 318,000 pounds of infant formula from Australia. That's about 4.7 million eight ounce bottles. Those deliveries will take place July 10th and July 21st. As home prices continue to rise across the country, mortgage debt has spiked too. Millennials seem to be paying more on their mortgage than most Americans. The average millennial, people born between 1981 and 96, owes 11% more on their mortgage than the average homeowner. According to Experian, the average mortgage uh, owed by a millennial is just over $255,000. And millennials also have the second highest mortgage debt just behind Gen X, people ages 42 to 57. And time now, 539 and 78 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, how Amazon Prime members can get a tasty new deal thanks to a partnership with Grubhub. And it's another day to avoid the heat. 78 degrees for now, but things will heat up later on. We'll be right back. Well, lots of people enjoy the popular social media app TikTok. However, security concerns involving the platform are growing. As CNN's Jen Sullivan reports now, the leader of the FCC is pressuring Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their app stores. Whoa! Is the world's most popular app TikTok a national security risk? According to one Federal Communications Commission official, it's more than just an entertainment app. It functions as a sophisticated surveillance tool that is harvesting vast amounts of data on U.S. users. FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr is calling on Apple and Google to remove TikTok from app stores because of security issues, claiming the app collects personal data like search and browsing history, biometrics and location information, and in some cases, draft messages. That's a problem, not just a national security problem, but to me it looks like a violation of the terms of the app store. TikTok is owned by the Beijing-based ByteDance, which means the company is essentially under the control of the Chinese government, which the FCC fears can take data and infiltrate communications. A recent BuzzFeed report uncovered linked audio from internal meetings in which employees in China reportedly said they were able to repeatedly access U.S. user data. But TikTok insists all U.S. user data is stored on American soil. We have never shared information with the Chinese government, nor would we. Michael Beckerman, TikTok's head of public policy in the Americas, says the claim that TikTok is collecting browser history is simply false. TikTok is not a security threat, and we're doing everything that we can, going above and beyond, working with trusted companies like Oracle, talking to actual 
um, agencies in the government that are responsible for national security to make sure that this is cleared up. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Okay, 544, 78 degrees. And do you need a new pet? Well, we're going to get a visit from the San Antonio Humane Society next. Well, look at this little snug bunny here. Aww. So Kim's here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Oh, little baby. Kind of, kind of on the shy side, doesn't know I, what's going on? Yeah. I think so. You know, just a little shy, but don't let that fool you because <laughs> yes. we're going to get to be a big puppy that can run outside. Look at those yeah. paws, right? Got, she's got some decent sized paws on her right now. A little she terror does. mix, short coat, really easy to take care of. Look at Absolutely. that little face, though. This will be one, you know, probably getting to be 40 pounds or yes. a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. But we'll still sure. be in your lap on the couch, yeah. in bed. Good running partner when yeah. it's cooler, um, for sure. Play with the kids in the backyard. And Lots so, yeah, of energy. She, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll love it. All right, what you so, got going on? So speaking of paws, we are doing a promo with Peter Piper Pizza. It's called Paws for Pizza. So you're looking for something for the kids. Um, next, on, I'm sorry, on Thursday, we they're doing a promo and 15% uh, goes back to the San Antonio Humane Society nice. at all San Antonio area Peter Piper locations. Just because, just, just pizza, 15% Exactly, goes to just mention the San Antonio Humane Society and 15% comes back. Hey, that is fantastic deal. So yeah, you get to help them out, maybe adopt, have yeah. some great pizza on top of it. So if you'd like more sure. information about that and a little flora here, just head on over to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. 226-7461 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. And in your morning consumer headlines, if you're one of 153 million Americans who are Amazon Prime members, you now have a tasty new benefit effective immediately. Amazon Prime members can now order food from Grubhub without a delivery fee. So the offer for Grubhub Plus is good for one year as long as a delivery order is for $12 or more. Now after the year is up, Prime members will automatically be charged the $9.99 monthly rate for the Grubhub Plus. All right, attention Costco shoppers. You may notice some price hikes at the food court. Before you get upset, no, the hot dog soda combo is still $1.50. But if you're a fan of the Warehouse Club's bacon and cheese stuffed chicken bake, yup, you'll have to shell out an extra dollar. It's reportedly gone up from $2.99 to $3.99. You want just a 20 ounce fountain drink. Those are now a whopping 69 cents instead of 59 cents. Hmm. Still less than a gallon of gas for a meal. That is That's true. also true. Yeah. Mike's quick with the math. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and check back with Justin Horn to see how the roads are looking. What was this called? The chicken bake? I've never even heard of this. Yeah, it's the, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, um, it almost looks like a breadstick, but it's baked chicken. It's like almost like a Caesar chicken oh, nice. with cheese thing going on. Okay. I recommend it. Yeah. Okay. Just pay a dollar more for it. I'm sure it's low calorie, by the way. Of course. Sure it is. Yes. Uh, let's go with that. Let's also talk about what's going on in the roads. There is not much there. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. You look at 90 and 36. Looks good there. Traffic's moving right along, and we do have that one issue still. Loop 410 and Ingram North, this is where you're having to exit to the uh, service road here. But all in all, I mean, traffic's moving slower, but this isn't causing a lot of backups yet. Uh, we keep thinking they're going to probably pick up these cones soon. Hasn't happened, so just keep in mind there's going to be a slowdown here at 410 and Ingram. We can see that here on our map. Uh, right now, it's just showing up as orange and yellow, so that just means uh, a little bit of a slowdown. You're certainly not coming to a stop, but this will... Uh, We'll maybe add a few uh, minutes onto your commute if you're heading west on 410. We still have that incident that Katrina has been covering all morning there on Sars and Moore just off of I-10 that uh, there is a police presence there, so it may cause uh, a few slowdowns. But this is off the major freeways. All right, two meteorologists for the price of one this morning. Let's <laughs> uh, traffic, though. Mike Mike has all the uh, important details on this crazy heat. I'm still thinking about the chicken thing. Do you, okay, do you eat that before or after you peruse all the little samples around there? So. I don't really do the samples. So really? I find yeah. it too tempting. Probably before. Yeah. Samples are the best part. Get it. I, I get mine <laughs> on the way out. <laughs> okay, be honest. Who has ever 
done the sample and then you kind of like walk around and then you sort of nonchalantly hope they don't recognize you again and go for the same sample again? I've heard of a lot of people doing that. I, I don't. I actually feel guilty because I, I want the sample, but then I want I feel like I need to buy the item. I'm I'm the su know, know, I'm the sucker that, that's, that's buying all the stuff I don't that's need. That's the stuff that we know and love. <laughs> yes, 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 it is. <laughs> all right. Beautiful picture out there. And yes, it does look like a, a Bob Ross painting out there, but no brush required. Thank you, Mother Nature, for that one. And thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, good visibility out there. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around. Uh, we've got temperatures that are in the mid upper 70s all around the area. Still lots of humidity. I mean, especially New Braunfels, Seguin, Randolph, Stinson, and Pleasant. You get these again dew points that measure moisture in the atmosphere. When it's getting up into the mid 70s, it is just it's a wet towel when you walk outside, so get ready when you open up the door. 82 is what it feels like in town, Casterville, and uh, 79 down there in Pleasanton. It is going to be a sizzling, scorching hot day today with some humidity thrown in on top of that. So we'll make it up in through the mid and upper 80s by mid-morning and already the low 90s by noon. Just to put it in perspective, the normal average high temperature right now, 94. So by, oh, right around... 1230 will be at the average normal high temperature and then we're going to top off at 102 later on today. We hit 101 yesterday and of course there is going to be some humidity left over this afternoon. It's not going to drop down really below 60 so we'll have a heat index to deal with. All right. I don't want to get folks too excited about this, but at least there's little tiny glimmers of hope on Sunday, which ironically is going to be the hottest day that we have in the next seven days tying for the uh, hottest so far this year. There's a really small chance for a stray shower or two. Don't get too excited about that. It's going to stay hot through the first part of next week, and then we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, and there's also a small chance for a shower or two. There's a little wave that's going to be coming in here from the uh, from the Gulf of Mexico, and that will give us that chance for some rain. And the high, which is just plaguing us, is going to sort of ease up ever so slightly by the middle part of next week. So there's, like I said, small glimmer of hope. 92 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today, 102. We're going to do that again tomorrow and then add to it as we go on into the weekend. And 105 for a high temperature on Sunday. That's going to be a new record. And then hopefully a couple of showers midweek next week. More coming up after the break. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we have the latest on the breaking news overnight. UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson agreeing to resign amid scandal. Plus, the suspect in the July 4th parade massacre made his first court appearance. Prosecutors say he confessed to the rampage, as authorities now say his father faces a criminal investigation. That and so much more, right here on GMA. This story is still trending online. We first showed you the viral video of rats at a Taco Cabana in Leon Valley. The restaurant off 410 in Bandera said they closed place to, uh, to close the place to clean and planned to reopen yesterday. We went back, still didn't see anyone there, so we emailed Taco Cabana. We are still waiting to hear back. Let us know. Much more to come on GMSA 6, including the breaking news from the UK overnight. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has agreed to resign. We will have more on the drama at Downing Street. Plus, we'll show you the scary video of police in New Jersey rescuing a man from a burning car with just seconds to spare. And while the very latest in this morning's top stories, an overnight fire at an apartment northwest of downtown leaves two people dead. We have details on where things are at in the investigation. And Justin is in for th this morning tracking some leftover construction. 410 at Ingram northbound. You see folks are being diverted to the frontage road. We'll see if that is the case at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. You're watching GMSA on this Thursday, July 7th. ABC's M1 in Washington. The man charged with killing seven people during a July 4th celebration near Chicago has confessed to his crimes, according to police. They also say he contemplated another attack that same day. The details coming up. Marriott has been hacked for the seventh time in the last 12 years. We'll tell you if your personal information could have been leaked. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's another day to prepare for the heat. But for now, we're at 78 degrees. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts 
right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is July 7th. Happy Thursday. Happy Friday, Junior. Hope you had a great week so <laughs> far. I know it's almost Friday. Uh, thing is, it's going to be hot, though. Extreme heat continues. Justin is doing traffic for Stephen this morning. So if we wanted a second opinion, we could get it. But at this point, it's not going to make much of a difference, is it, Mike? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're all pretty much in, in agreement about this. Yeah. The fact that it's uh, going to get hotter this weekend. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, uh, you know, and, and on the serious side, we're going to be seeing temperatures, actual air temperatures getting up to 105 is what we're forecasting on Sunday. And uh, that's where it's just, it is dangerous to be outside in the sun. You got to really, really be careful. And we always emphasize about hydrating and do it before you even go outside, before you get thirsty, because then it's too late. So this morning we've got some clouds hanging around here right now, and temperatures are in the upper 70s, mid and upper 70s around most all of the area, 79 out there at the airport. Then you got to factor in some of the humidity, which is out there. So we've gone through our, our sort of daily cycle where it does drop somewhat in the afternoon, comes back up in the morning. So that's why we've got these heat index readings of 82 at the airport. Same thing at Castorville and mold at least is on the light side. It has been dropping down since it peaked on Saturday and the update account is going to be coming out in about uh, an hour, hour and a half or so. So temperatures will be about steady this morning where they are right now. Wind this afternoon and throughout the day is going to be southerly 10, 15, 20 miles per hour, not overly windy. And then we're going to make it up to 92 today at noon. Then add about 10 degrees to that. Yesterday we hit 101, going for 102 today. And to put it in perspective, the average normal high temperature is still at 94. So 8 degrees above that. And it's only going to get hotter as time rolls on. There is a tiny, tiny little sliver of of hope way down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, here is Justin. What's going on, sir? Mike, what did you have for Sunday? 105. Yeah. That's what I got, too. Can't confirm. Yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're on the same page here. The bottom line, as Mike said, it's going to be hot. One thing we've got to watch out for if you're traveling on the roads, and this goes with the weather, is with as hot as it is, uh, blowouts become a little bit easier with the tires. So you got to keep them properly inflated because if they aren't, you get a little more friction on the road, and as hot as the roads are, you can get those blowouts. You start to see those tire shreds along a lot of the major freeways this time of year. So be careful out there. This is the one issue we are having, 410 at Ingram North. This is westbound. All traffic is having to exit onto the service road. This is construction, but it is slowing folks down a little bit. Just within the last 10 minutes or so, I've seen this uh, train of cars here kind of slow down a little bit. We're still flowing here, but as traffic picks up, you're going to see more and more uh, issues as long as this construction is still going on. No indications yet as when uh, as to when this will be picked up, but we'll certainly keep an eye on it. And uh, as we look at the uh, map here, it is now showing up as, or at least our system is picking this up as an accident. We'll investigate that a little bit more, but we have seen construction here, which has been slowing things down. We'll, uh, we'll look into that. Otherwise, we also have that police presence that Katrina Weber has been following this morning off of Zarzamora. That's uh, Causing a few slowdowns, but that's off the, the main highways there. Uh, otherwise, smooth flowing across much of the rest of the freeways here in town. We'll have more on, the, on uh, what's going on on uh, 410 here coming up in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. We are staying on top of late breaking news. A sad discovery at the scene of an apartment fire. Two people, a man and woman, were found dead inside that burning home. Now homicide detectives are a part of the investigation. Our Katrina Weber is live where it happened northwest of downtown in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue. Katrina, we understand the two people were members of the same family. Well, that's right. That's according to some of the other family members who have shown up here at the scene. We had a chance to talk to them just a little while ago. They say that the woman and man had a nephew-aunt relationship, so she was his aunt. Both of them killed in, well, found dead inside this house that was on fire earlier this morning. Let me give you a look at the video from around midnight. That is when the fire department got the call out here to the 900 block of Waverly Avenue. They were able to knock down that fire once they got inside the apartment, they did discover the two bodies, the man and woman. The woman, about 50 years old, the man in his late 30s. And uh, for some reason, whatever they found inside that apartment prompted them to call in arson investigators and then San Antonio police homicide investigators. Both of those teams were out here 
earlier, uh, looking over the scene, collecting evidence, but they have not released any information to us about what they found. So we don't know whether this is actually a crime scene or not, but both of those teams were called in to investigate. Now, the family did share a little bit of information about the two people who died. They said that uh, the man had been living here for some time. The woman had recently moved here from Mexico. They say she came here to work so that she could earn money to take care of her children. Both of them found dead inside that apartment. Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Also new overnight, British media reporting that Prime Minister Boris Johnson has agreed to resign, ending an unprecedented political crisis over his future. The Prime Minister had rebuffed calls by his cabinet to step down in the wake of ethics scandals. He gave in after more than 40 ministers quit his government and told him to go. It's not immediately clear yet whether Johnson plans to stay in office while the Conservative Party chooses a new leader who will replace him as Britain's Prime Minister. And now to the migrant tragedy here in San Antonio. The man accused of driving the truck has waived his court hearing. For now, Omero Zamorano Jr. has agreed to remain in jail pending a trial. He is facing a charge in connection to the deadly human smuggling case. Now, if convicted, he could face the death penalty. Meanwhile, all but six of the 53 migrants have been identified. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott has been sending more DPS troopers and taxpayer money to help beef up security at the Texas-Mexico border. Now, the U.S. Department of Justice is taking a closer look at Operation Lone Star. DOJ wants to find out if civil rights violations were committed under Governor Abbott's border initiative. State records show the Texas Department of Public Safety was notified of the probe back in May. In a letter, the DOJ says it received information that DPS might be targeting people for arrest based on their race or national origin. Several groups and immigration attorneys have asked questions about migrants who are arrested for trespassing and detained for weeks at a time. Trespassing is a misdemeanor. Governor Abbott's office told ABC News the Biden administration is attacking the state for, quote, taking unprecedented actions to do the federal government's job, end quote. And we continue to learn more about the tragedy at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. A new report on the school massacre says a police officer had a chance to open fire on the gunman, but missed that opportunity while waiting for permission to shoot. That report is from the Active Shooter Training Center. It also says some of the 21 victims at Robb Elementary School likely could have been saved on May 24th had they received medical attention sooner. The report is yet another assessment of how police fail to act on opportunities that might have saved lives. Meanwhile, the 21 year old man charged with unleashing a hail of bullets into an Independence Day parade near Chicago is now confessing to his crime. According to prosecutors, the suspect also considered opening fire at another celebration that same day. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. Good morning. Authorities are having a hard time explaining how Robert Cremo slipped past the safeguards of an Illinois law designed to prevent people deemed dangerous from getting guns. The man charged with killing seven people at a 4th of July parade near Chicago, confessing he opened fire from a rooftop into a crowd of families, according to prosecutors. Police say Robert Cremo III then fled to Madison, Wisconsin, where he considered shooting up another celebration. He seriously contemplated using the firearm he had in his vehicle to commit another shooting. Ultimately, he decided against it. Now, authorities say Cremo's father could also face criminal charges for the role he played in helping his son buy multiple guns, including the murder weapon. Cremo's father, despite Illinois' red flag law, sponsoring the application for his son's permit in 2020, just months after police responded to his home, where Cremo was allegedly threatening to kill everyone. The Highland Park community now planning funerals, two of them for two-year-old Aiden McCarthy's parents, who were found slumped over their son. He just kept saying, is mama and dada okay? Cremo's next court appearance is at the end of the month. If convicted, he would face life in prison without the possibility of parole. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer headlines, baby formula from overseas that's helped fill the gap on store shelves across the country may be here to stay. The FDA now says it is working on new rules that would allow global makers of formula to continue selling in the U.S. even after the current shortage eases. 
Job openings across the country pulling back just a bit. Labor Department says there were 11.3 million openings in May. That's down from the month before, but still nearly two jobs available for every unemployed American. Time now, 610 and 78 degrees for now. Much more to come on GMSA. WNBA star Brittany Grinder's drug trial resumes in Russia this morning. We'll tell you how the White House is responding. And good news at the pump. Gas prices are finally starting to drop in Texas. We're going to show you where we found some of the cheapest fuel. Two SAPD officers being credited with saving a woman from a burning vehicle. That's coming up right after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are at 78 degrees for now. Not too bad out there. Later on, expecting those triple digits once again. We'll be right back. Trending right now over on our website, newly video, new release video shows the dramatic moments when two SAPD officers rescued a woman from a crashed and burning vehicle. The crash happened back on June 23rd at St. Cloud and Donaldson on the city's northwest side. Flames could be seen shooting from the overturned vehicle with the woman trapped in the driver's seat. Now, eventually the door gave way enough for them to pull the woman out. You can watch the entire video of the incident right now and read more about the rescue. Look for this article on KSAT.com. And time now, 6.15. Let's go ahead and check back with Justin Horn. Hey there, guys. Uh, we're looking at some of the trans guide shots here. This is 410 and in Ingram, so we're seeing some improvement. The construction has been picked up, but we are still detecting an accident here, which may be slowing things down. This view actually looks okay. That's at 410 and again, Ingram North. But traffic in general is starting to pick up around the area. I want to show you the map here real quick. And uh, this is where our system is indeed picking up uh, that accident right at Ingram. And it had been causing a slowdown. It looks like things are improving pretty rapidly here, though. And as you look at the drive times here, uh, it is slowing down a little bit. It looks like it's uh, about eight minutes, and the average speed is about 60 miles per hour. Just a few minutes ago, the average speed was about 50 miles per hour. So I think we're seeing some improvements. That accident may have been uh, already been cleaned up. Uh, so uh, 410 should be good to go here soon. Meantime, we're also uh, hearing of an accident down here near Applewhite Road and Walsh Road uh, doesn't seem to be causing a lot of issues. This is off of Highway 16 there, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. Those are the two incidents we have out there. Otherwise, looking at trans guide shots, everything is moving along pretty smoothly at this point. Pretty nice morning commute, and uh, hopefully it continues that way, guys. We hope so. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Mike Osterhage? Yes. I get, I get to be the bearer of bad news. Yeah, yeah that's all we have. We just yeah. said we just wanted to say your name. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, because it is it's hot and it's going to be getting hotter. Unfortunately, as you can see in that picture and some of those trans guide cameras that uh, Justin was pointing out and I need to. Uh, well, I'm just going to jump ahead of that. I didn't hit a correct button a little there, a little button there to make all the nifty little graphics pop up. Anyway, um, beautiful view yesterday. I love that shot out there by Bracken Cave. Just some of those uh, kind of high clouds hanging around here. Great looking sunset. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, yesterday we did hit day number 28 of triple digit readings well above the average and we are just going to continue to add to that and at the rate things are going, I think maybe a couple of these, at least the uh, well, Number two, number three could be in jeopardy, perhaps number four, because a lot of these uh, in these years, a lot of those triple digit temperatures were hit in the month of August. Now we do have a little bit of hope coming in here next week for a, a break in the action, if you will. Um, as far as rain, one thing about this, uh, put negative numbers in front. This is the deficit just in the past 30 days, believe it or not, two, two and a half, three inches below where we should be at this point, just as far as rainfall in the past 30 days. So yeah, the, I mean, goes without saying that it's a desperate situation as far as that goes. We are going to be into the low 80s in the next couple of hours and already into the low 90s by late morning and early afternoon, 92 at noon, and then we're going to top off at 102 later on this afternoon, which yesterday was 101, so we continue to add Add a degree or two to that. Plus, we'll have some humidity left over here. And so that's why heat index reading is going to be well up a uh, few degrees above the actual air temperature. That's the high, which is the uh, the culprit for all of this. It is sitting on top of us, pushing down in the atmosphere, not allowing anything uh, to, to form up as far as any rain. It's going to continue to strengthen somewhat going into the weekend. 
That's why we're looking at hotter temperatures Saturday as well as Sunday. Then we get this sort of break. It, it scoots off to the west slightly, and this other high centers off here to the east. And in between them, what we're looking for are these little waves coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico, and that is going to be sliding on in. And this is our small chance of hope for um, at least temperatures down a few more degrees by midweek and also a small chance for some rain by midweek. 92 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 102 and will continue to be well up into the low hundreds tomorrow and Saturday. Sunday, we're looking at 105. That would tie for the hottest day so far this year. The record on Sunday as it stands right now is 103. So pretty good bet that that may uh, fall. Funny 105, but yet there's a small chance for a stray shower on Sunday. Don't get really excited about that, but that's slightly, slightly better chance of rain on Wednesday. So small it earned itself parentheses, you said. Yeah, it's just kind of like yeah. eh, maybe <laughs> sort of. So. And then next week we use tiny quotation marks. But hopefully um, a, a small break in the action in this pattern by Wednesday. Oh, I hope so. Me too. That Me 97 too. looks really good right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 619, about 78 degrees. And Apple has a new feature designed to beef up security on your iPhone. We're going to explain right after the break. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. And welcome back. It is 623. WNBA star Brittany Griner's drug trial resumes in Russia this morning. She has been held in Russia since February, and now the White House is facing criticism after President Biden called Griner's wife. The criticism coming from the family of another American held in Russia who say they've never received such a phone call. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. Last night, a rally for Brittany Griner, held by the team she's led for nearly a decade. Brittany Griner, BG. The Phoenix Mercury, their fans, and Griner's family, making it clear Brittany is not alone. I honestly can't rest until she's home. President Biden, please help bring BG home. Day two of the WNBA Stars trial gets underway this morning in Moscow, just days after the White House received a handwritten letter Griner wrote to President Biden, reading in part, I'm terrified I might be here forever. The president and vice president yesterday called Griner's wife directly. The White House saying the president called Cheryl to reassure her that he is working to secure Britney's release as soon as possible. Let's make sure this administration knows that they have our support to do whatever is necessary and that we are not going to ever be quiet until she's home safely. But the family of Paul Whelan, an American detained in Russia since 2018, is slamming the president, saying he's never called them. Whelan's sister tweeting, still looking for that press release, saying President Biden has spoken to anyone in our family about Paul Whelan wrongfully detained in Russia for three and a half years. More than 1,000 black women leaders also wrote to President Biden, urging him to make a deal to bring Griner home. She could face 10 years in prison if convicted of carrying vape cartridges with cannabis oil through a Russian airport. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple's new effort to protect iPhones lockdown mode is meant to shield high profile users like politicians from state sponsored hackers. It turns off several vulnerable iPhone features, reducing the number of ways hackers can attack a target. Marriott has been hacked again, at least its seventh data breach since 2010. The hotel company says most of the information was non-sensitive internal business files and did not involve its core network. 
Attackers tried to extort the company, but Marriott refused to pay. Thursday morning time check, 625, 78 degrees. And much more to come on GMSA at 630, including this scary video out of New Jersey. Police officers tried desperately to save a man from a burning vehicle. All of it caught on camera. And here at home, we know two people are dead this morning after a fire at an apartment complex northwest of downtown. We'll have the latest on the investigation. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guide looking there at Loop 410 at Ingram Road where things are moving now. There was a little bit of construction there earlier this morning, but seems to be pretty clear. We'll be checking in with Justin Horn this morning in the next half hour. A woman is dead this morning after she was struck by a vehicle on the city's east side. We'll tell you what we know. Also on the east side, cleanup is underway after a fire at a warehouse. Details ahead. And new details on the deadly school shooting at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. Why a new report says it could have been prevented. And finally, some good news at the pump. Gas prices in Texas beginning to drop. We're going to tell you where in town you can find some of the cheapest fuel. And desperately searching for relief from the heat, it is nowhere in sight. Well, there's a tiny little chance, but it's so small, Mike has it in parentheses this morning. <laughs> Literally. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. That would be July 7th. Thanks for joining us this morning. But yeah, we'll take any little bit of relief, even if it's in parentheses. What was it? A shower, maybe? The, well, yeah, that's, uh, as I've been saying all morning long, ironically, on the day when we are going to hit our highest temperature, before there's any sort of uh, relief and small chance of that, we got to get we're going to get hotter as we go on into the weekend. This morning, we're starting off a couple of uh, clouds out there. A little bit of sunshine is peeking on through right now. And temperatures are still pretty much five degrees above normal. We're at 79 right now. 72 is the dew point. A lot of moisture out there, a lot of humidity. That does drop down somewhat in the afternoon, but it's still been hanging in. Enough humidity has been sticking around in the afternoon that that's what's been making it even more miserable with that the heat index we're dealing with on top of those triple digit temperatures. Temperatures. 82 is what it feels like at the airport right now. 82 also in Castroville, mid 70s in the hill country. We do have a low amount of mold. Updated pollen count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. So warm and humid this morning and then later on this afternoon, hot and still again, some humidity. So it just adds that that little salt to the wound, if you will. It is going to get hotter through the weekend. We are looking at a record high temperature on Sunday and it's also going to be tying for the hottest temperature we've hit officially out there at the airport so far this year 105 on Sunday next week we start off very hot and then yes that very small glimmer of hope by the uh, middle part of next week sort of a little bit of a change in the overall weather pattern explain it all coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Justin Horn is in this morning what's going on sir Mike we're starting to pick up on a couple more incidents out there you, you see the cloud cover that Mike just talked about so still cloudy for now and as we look at the roads uh, Everything looks good here at 410 and 151. I'm not detecting a lot of issues on the trans guide cameras per se. Most of these incidents are uh, off the main highways. There is a stalled car though at 90 in Nogalitos. There's 281 in Bassey. Looks good there too. Uh, those incidents. Uh, first one I want to point out is down here near Apple White Road. So here's the Toyota plant, Lone Star Pass here. This is Highway 16. This is off on Apple White Road. And it uh, looks like we're seeing some pretty good slowdowns here. At last check, cars only moving about seven miles per hour. So this is kind of slow going here in the northbound lanes there on Apple White near the Toyota plant. Looks like we do have uh, an incident there. So keep that in mind. And then as we look north, looks like this is around West Road and Bassey, a minor incident that, that may be causing a few slowdowns. But again, nothing on the major freeways this morning, at least so far. Morning commute looks good if you're heading out the door right now. If anything else pops up. We'll let you know. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Justin. Members of a local family are dealing with devastating news. The deaths of two of their loved ones. San Antonio firefighters found their bodies after putting out a fire in an apartment northwest of downtown. This happened overnight in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue near Culebra Road and North Zarzamorma. Katrina Weber is live at the scene there. And Katrina, you've been talking all morning about homicide detectives being involved in this case. Is that a routine situation? 
No, I can't say that it is something that we see often at the scene, even when there are deaths involved in a fire. But that was the case this morning. We had police here. They had roped off this area uh, around the house where those deaths occurred. Now, uh, we don't know and we won't know until police release details of their investigation. But what we do know is that there was a fire involved. And we have some video to show you from that situation. Uh, the fire broke out around midnight. Firefighters got here. They say that they found a fire coming out of that apartment. They knocked it down, and then once they went inside, that is when they discovered the bodies of a man and woman. Now, we have learned from other relatives that these were this was an aunt and her nephew inside that apartment. Both of them found dead. For whatever reason, firefighters felt the need to call in homicide investigators uh, as they went on this morning. And so we had police here, again, taking evidence, along with arson investigators, taking evidence, going through that apartment. But we don't know exactly what they found or whether, in fact, they believe that a crime was committed. That will have to come out later on. But for now, we do know two people dead inside a home that was on fire early this morning. Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Right now, crews are monitoring for hot spots after a warehouse fire on, on the city's east side. That started around 8.15 last night on East Houston Street near I-37. And that's where crews say flames were seen on the top floors of the building. No one was hurt. The building has been undergoing renovations, and investigators believe the fire was accidental. An investigation underway after a woman was hit and killed. That crash happened a little after 9 last night on MLK on the east side. Police tell us a woman was hit crossing the street. She died at a local hospital. The Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented. That's the finding of a scorching new assessment from an active shooter training center. The report doesn't name names, but the Uvalde mayor is doing just that. As John Paul Barajas reports, he is accusing someone of covering up the truth. It began with a crash and soon gunfire in Uvalde. At 11.32, the report states the gunman reached a teacher's parking lot and fired towards school windows. Less than a minute later, he entered Rob Elementary. It's between that time frame, a Uvalde police officer armed with a rifle had the gunman in his sights. The gunman was able to get into the school as the officer asked for permission to shoot. A finding that doesn't sit well with the parents of a student survivor. You see a gunman running with a gun in his hand, running towards a school full of kids that are still there in class. I would have shot him. In the report, alert notes the officer did not have to ask permission to fire since deadly force was warranted, but also adding the officer was concerned gunfire could hit kids in the area. A little over three minutes after the gunman's entry, 11 officers, some with body armor and rifles, are in the building and make their way to classrooms 111 and 112. They take on gunfire. This is where the report cites them losing momentum. They backed away as parents tried to go in. They are holding us back, trying to do their job, to go in and, and and really, I wish we would have all just barged in. The review states their training is to stop the killing, then stop the dying, adding, quote, this ordering means that we expect officers to assume risk to save innocent lives. As the gunman shoots sporadically, 19 minutes after he entered the school, the first ballistic shield arrives. Minutes later, 911 calls are made from inside the classrooms. For 13 minutes, there's conversations between officers in the hallway. At the time, District Police Chief Pete Arredondo asked for classroom keys, but they never tried to open the door. At 12.37, Arredondo attempts to negotiate with the suspect for 10 minutes. Finally, at 12.50, the classrooms are breached. The gunman is killed. Alerts said there were also possibilities to distract the suspect and breach the door to get into the classroom sooner. The report also noted there was some confusion in coordination among officers. Some were bunched up in different areas of the hallway, which could have led to crossfire among law enforcement, but ultimately came down to not rushing in to save more lives. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. And DPS has said Pete Arredondo was a lead commander for the response and placed blame on him. Uvalde's mayor has claimed DPS has been leaving information out in their own response to the shooting. The Justice Department is set to conduct their own review of the investigation. Now on KSET.com, after refusing to testify in the Robb Elementary School shooting investigation so far, Texas House officials are now calling Uvalde County Sheriff to stand if to the stand. If he complies, the sheriff's sheriff is scheduled to testify on July 11th. It's unclear what happens if he doesn't show up. You can read the latest out of Uvalde on our website.
All right, back here at home, San Antonio starting to see gas prices start with the number three again. Gas Buddy has several gas stations listed from the 395 to 399 range. We found gas for 399 over at Marbach and 410 at the HEB and 711. That's well below the national average of 475 and the state average of 432. Gas Buddy says Texas prices have dropped an average of, uh, average of about 26 cents over the past month. Safety changes could be coming for a busy west side intersection after months of asking. Now this is at 39th and Commerce Street near Monterey Park. According to San Antonio Police Department records, 58 crashes have been reported within that small area between 2016 and 2021. San Antonio Public Works Department wrapped up a year-long traffic study of that intersection back in May. The study found the intersection does warrant a traffic signal. The project budget request will go before City Council in September. If approved, work can start on the traffic signal in October. Caught on camera, take a look. A race against time. Three officers in Ridgefield, New Jersey, pull a man who's trapped in a burning car to safety. You can see those massive flames just pouring from the hood. Police say the driver was unable to open the doors because of an electrical malfunction, so the officers pulled the man through the passenger window. That driver able to walk away with his family there at the scene. Time now, 639 and 78 degrees for now. In your GMA first look, United Airlines says the FAA's air traffic control system is to blame for most of the recent flight delays and cancellations. That's coming up at 7 o'clock right here on KSAT 12. And are you getting enough sleep at night? If not, it could be for a number of reasons. Just ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you some secrets to getting the best rest. 643, this much is known. Sleep is critical for good health, especially heart health. It helps your body repair itself and helps your brain organize its thoughts. 50 million Americans suffer from more than 80 different sleep disorders. And there's growing evidence that not getting enough sleep can wreak havoc on your heart and your brain. A recent study out of Harvard finds people in midlife have often faced a combination of sleep problems like waking up in the early hours or sleeping less than six hours a night. Experts say those issues could actually triple the risk of heart disease. So is one sleeping position healthier than another? Most sleep experts say sleeping on your back may be best. It positions your weight evenly and minimizes neck and back pain. And if you have that back or neck pain, do not sleep in the fetal position. It can compromise circulation and breathing. And which side is best to sleep on? Well, there are pros and cons. If you sleep on your left side all night, you can put a strain on your liver and lungs. And if you sleep on your right side all night, it can exasperate heart heartburn. Sleep also important for our brains. Harvard researchers found it helps consolidate memories we want to preserve, transferring them from short term to long term memories. And much of that occurs during state two of sleep, which is a light sleep phase that happens in the hours just before waking. Let's check on traffic at 644. What's up, Justin? Well, we're looking at 90 in Nova Lita. So we still have that stolen car we've been showing you most of the morning uh, right there. But what you're noticing here, just on the very corner of your screen, some slower traffic starting to show up as you get a little closer to downtown. Some brake lights starting to show up, and we're seeing more and more of that on the freeways as traffic picks up this morning. So far, not a lot of big incidents out there, and that's the good news. Uh, as we look at some other cameras here, everything's moving right along. At 281 at Bassey and I-10 there in the lower levels. Looks good there. And uh, look at 90 and th at 36. Looks like we do have some flashing lights there, but that is off on one of the ramps and doesn't seem to be causing any issues. The map showing we have a couple incidents here still going. One down here on Apple White Road. And this is the Toyota plant here, Lone Star Pass. You got Highway 16. This is off of Highway 16 on Apple White. And it looks like things are improving a little bit, but there was an accident reported there with some slower traffic uh, just kind of crawling along there. Uh, as you go north. And in the meantime, uh, up around uh, I-10, this is just off I-10. This was reported as a vehicle fire, but this is on sort of the uh, side road, so it's not really uh, causing any issues either. Otherwise, good, uh, good looking commute this morning. Let's hope it stays that way, guys. All right, KSAT Connect picture we didn't know we needed this morning, and it's doggone cute, isn't it, Mike? It is adorable, yeah. And Jaeger was ready for the uh, the 4th of July, and... I believe it's Jaeger. Jaeger, I'm yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the expression in his eyes, it's like, come on, take the picture. Take the picture. <laughs> this is true. Just, and just, God bless you, USA.
just one. You don't have to tag me right. in it. So, but yeah. that's a great, beautiful dog too. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect shot. All right, we do have a few morning clouds out there. The sun is starting to uh, squeeze over the horizon, and boy, it is going to heat up very, very quickly. We do have humidity this morning. Step outside; it is definitely going to greet you, uh, especially when you get down to the uh, say down around Stinson, down around Pleasanton, even over around New Braunfels or up around New Braunfels, I should say. Humidity is extremely high. 92 at noon. 90 five at one o'clock. So already by one o'clock, we're above the normal high temperature. And then we just continue to turn up the broiler and it's going to be 102 today. We hit 101 yesterday and get used to those. Uh, the triple digits up in not just one followed by two zeros, but it's going to be uh, well up into the low hundreds the next few days. And plus, we'll still have enough humidity left over this afternoon to where we're going to have this heat index readings that are going to be adding uh, about two, three, four degrees or more to the actual air temperature. So yeah, you just got to stay inside. If you can't hydrate as much as possible, as much shade as possible as well. Sunday, which is going to be the hottest day in the forecast, tying where we've been already back in June for 105, but there is a very small chance one or two showers could pop up later on in the afternoon. A little bit of a glitch in the atmosphere. Then it's back to the heat, not quite as hot Monday, Tuesday. Uh, also, by midweek, there's going to be a weakness or a little wave, if you will, coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to then give us a chance for a couple of showers by Wednesday, maybe even extending into Thursday around here. So it's not a huge chance of rain, but putting a 20% on it as of right now. And then, of course, with some extra clouds, a little bit of a change in the overall pattern, temperatures will be down a few degrees by midweek as well. 92 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and add 10 to that 102. Of course, we'll still have somewhat of a heat index, so it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be tough to be outside this afternoon. 102 as well tomorrow and then we heat up from there getting into the uh, 103 range on Saturday, 105 Sunday. The record on Sunday is 103. So that looks like it's a pretty, uh, pretty sure bet it's going to be broken and a very small chance for shower on Sunday. Then we get into midweek and that small chance for a shower or two on Wednesday. You get this little bit of a wave coming on in here, slight break in the uh, pattern that we're stuck in. So that'll knock us down to 97 and a 20% chance for shower. Yeah, here, come in real close to me, almost shoulder to shoulder. This is what it's going to be like at local water parks this weekend. Oh, it's yeah. It's going to be kind of like, like this. <laughs> I it agree. Is, it is yeah. the hottest, coolest time in Texas. 649, <laughs> 78 degrees. It's a winery and rhino preserve. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we introduce you to Blake, who's living his best life on a Fredericksburg winery and the reason behind his stay. And a look outside with a live cam. Yes, it's going to be packed at those splash pads and water parks, but right now, 78 degrees. That's very pleasant compared to the triple digits we'll see later on. We'll be right back. San Antonio firefighters put out a fire, but then have police opening a homicide investigation. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, northwest of downtown. This is where firefighters made that discovery around midnight this morning in a back apartment here in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue. Uh, firefighters got the original call just after midnight. They arrived, put out that fire in the apartment, and that is when they discovered the bodies of a man and woman. Other relatives say that that included an aunt and her nephew. Now, we don't know why firefighters called in police, but the homicide investigators were later called in here to uh, check out the scene. They, along with arson investigators, went through that apartment looking for evidence. We don't know exactly what they found, whether this, in fact, is a crime or perhaps an accident, but those details should be coming out later on. Again, a man and woman found dead inside an apartment that was on fire earlier this morning. Reporting from northwest of downtown Town, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And some breaking news. Boris Johnson just officially announced his resignation as Britain's prime minister, saying, quote, is clearly the will of the conservative party. There should be a new leader. Johnson says he has appointed a new cabinet while he remains as UK's prime minister until successor is chosen. Look for more on this story, both on air and online. Coming up this morning on GMS 89, she graduated high school in May and now she's graduating with her associates this summer and look forward to the next looking forward rather to the next step in her education. 
Tiffany Huertas introduces us to a young lady who has received multiple scholarships, totaling thousands of dollars to help her reach her dreams of someday protecting Americans from cyber threats. We'll have that and much more today on GMSA at 9. And time now, 6.54, time to check in with Justin Horn. We have a new incident coming in on the northwest side. We'll take you up to 1604 near Babcock where uh, we have a fender bender reported here, but it is taking up a couple of lanes, so traffic has slowed quite a bit as you're heading eastbound on 1604. Uh, you can see it uh, slowing now back to past Kyle Seal Parkway. This is already a, a, an area with construction, and now we add an accident to the mix. That means it's going to be slow going up there. Meantime, we still have that accident down off Applewhite Road just north of the Toyota plant. Some slow traffic there as well. Mike. And we do have a couple of clouds out there. Sun is uh, trying to squeeze over the horizon, starting to see it just a little bit. Very warm, very humid, of course, 78 degrees right now. And uh, mid upper 70s all around the area, about four degrees above normal. And then later on today, it is going to be another blisteringly hot day, 102. But pardon the grammar, ain't seen nothing yet. 103 Saturday, 105 on Sunday. A small chance for a shower popping up on Sunday. And then slightly better chance maybe a, kind of breaking this overall pattern somewhat by uh, or at least a weakness in the pattern by midweek and a small chance for some rain then. I saw some good uh, pro tips on on automobile use during the summertime. Some things maybe we forgot about. They say a lot of folks forget to use the recirculate button in their car yeah. AC. Energy, yes. Now they also say this. It doesn't help you initially roll the windows down to get the really hot air out. Yes. Then use your recirculate. A very good reminder at this time. Food for thought. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Stay cool.